Guys, I have some very important news for you all. Setup Wars is back to a bi-weekly schedule, ladies and gents. So grab your body pillow, sit back and relax, and let the Setup Wars begin. Another copyright strike? I spent forever looking for that song. Why don't you just use Filmora? What's Filmora? That right there is Filmora. He's got you covered. I don't get it. What does he do? He's a video editor that can generate commercially available music with AI within a matter of seconds. I mean, you can change the mood, theme, genre, pretty much everything to make it fit the scene perfectly and even edit it afterwards. That song that just played, by the way, was generated by him. Okay, that's actually pretty handy, but does it have any other features? Oh yeah, let's say you wanna reach wider audiences. It will use AI to translate your video in your own voice. It will match the tone and even create speech to text subtitles for you to use in the video. It's actually pretty crazy. Voglio che tu sappia che gli incubi sono appena iniziati. I wish I knew about this sooner. How can I get one? Just click the link in the description section. It's free to start and you can choose between three different plans to take advantage of the AI features. Kicking off the show is none other than Andreas. This is not his second or third, but fourth time on Setup Wars. And by the looks of it, quite a bit has changed compared to his previous submission once again. To refresh your memory, Andreas is a controller from Germany who built this setup for gaming and working from home. This is the third time he has upgraded in the span of just three years. Damn! At first glance, even though the color scheme has stayed the same, the colors are now inverted. The wall behind the setup is now white and he's opted for black furniture with black decor to keep the balance and contrast. He moved the desk slightly to the right and filled the empty space above the monitors with some really cool acoustic diffuser panels. Also, instead of the narrow leaf lines, he now has custom self-made RGB lines all around the room, keeping the symmetry and adding nice accent lighting, all controlled right from his smartphone. All the cables are hidden behind the white cable raceways that blend in well with the wall. This combination definitely looks a lot better than just the nano leaf lines from the previous submission. His monitor layout has also changed. He got rid of both of his ultrawides and now uses two Alienware monitors in a spaced out T layout with a 37 and inch as his main and 24.5 inch as the vertical monitor. One thing that has not changed is the custom cutout in the desk for his stream deck. This time around, right between his monitors and peripherals instead of the right hand side. Talking about peripherals, he's upgraded to a custom 60% keyboard and a Final House Starlight Pro 10s edition mouse. Personal suggestion here, if you decide to name the keyboard, do not name it the Deep. I did offer to send a black TS Topo mouse pad in episode 317, but according to the notes, he isn't well versed with Discord. You know, normally I don't make exceptions, but you've been on the show so many times, it's fine. Just toss me an actual email with your details and we'll hook you up with a brand new TechSource mouse pad. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but we do offer custom pads right now. You can actually upload your very own or customize any of the designs we already have to your color scheme. Check them out at techsourceshop.com or just click the link below. I see you took some feedback from the last video and lifted the main monitor just enough for it to not block the sound bar this time around. And speaking of audio, he also dished his microphone completely, so the only input source now is the built-in mic on the Corsair HS80s he uses for gaming, which is hanging from the side of the desk. Cable management is still immaculate, just like last time. The sit and stand desk stands no chance against his will of routing the cables perfectly. The PC power in the setup is still mostly the same. He switched to the black O11 Mini and upgraded to a Ryzen 7 5800X. I really love that frame drawing right above your PC, which I assume was done by your daughter. Correct me if I'm wrong. That reminds me of the little doodles that Shayla and Olivia do from time to time. And I just love it when you add stuff like that to the setup that brings sentimental value. Thank you for coming on the show. Up next is Estefan, a chef from San Diego who built this setup mainly for gaming and listening to music and to showcase his figurine collection. 
I won't ask questions regarding that thing you have on the right side, but it does look awfully similar to something my wife has in her nightstand. We have the classic black captain tabletop with the Alex George combo. You know, I'm really curious if IKEA would be down for a collab because of all the inspiration and the sales Setup Wars has generated for them over the years. At this point, I'm expecting a royalty check. Anyways, back to the setup. Estefan is rocking a single 34 inch MSI optics monitor that's mounted on the desk and that is sandwiched by his Pioneer speakers. I would recommend getting a couple of speaker stands to tilt them a little bit so they're aimed at your ear level. This would also reduce vibrations caused when you're blasting Hatsune Miku remixes. When it's time to clap some cheeks, Estefan switches to the Nubwo N7 headphones, which is stored on a pegboard to the right. His peripherals of choice are the Echo ACR custom keyboard paired with an Epo Maker numpad and the glorious Model O mouse. That Model O was actually my daily driver before I got tired of the crappy battery life and then I swapped over to the A950 Pro and it is night and day coming from that mouse. Now I know what you're all thinking, okay, what in tarnation is that chewed up bubblegum shaped cloud on the desk? To tell you the truth, I have no idea either. Estefan didn't mention anything in the notes, however it's safe to assume that it's some sort of a weeby wrist rest. For those of you who actually use this wrist rest, I have a genuine question for you guys. Number one, is it actually comfortable? Number two, would you recommend it? Now on to the climax. The white beauty of a PC that's powering the setup is rocking an i7 12700K with 32 gigs of RAM and the Gigabyte RTX 3070 Ti. I just love how he stayed so consistent with his colors all across the setup and the PC. Hell, even that pink colored cloud contributes to the whole picture nicely. Finally, approaching my favorite part of the setup, the cables. I see that there has been some effort to route them. You even attached the power strips underneath the desk, so I don't understand why you didn't use a few cable ties to clean up a little bit. Also, I personally would have put the Olav leg a bit further back as well, just to support the monitor's weight, and additionally to free up more space for your legs to move around. But you know what, all in all, it's still a well-executed setup. With a few minor tweaks, it could truly show its potential. Thank you, Estefan, for coming on the show. Up next is Johnny Boy, a technical consultant from Slovakia with a slightly more minimalistic setup. Is Slovakia somewhere in Slovenia or vice versa or are they two completely different countries? They're two different countries, aren't they? It took him a total of three months to complete the setup, which he uses mainly for work, gaming, consuming content and potentially expanding his creative skill set. Apart from those, there isn't much decor around the setup. And the reason behind it is that Johnny is renting a one-room apartment together with his girlfriend. They are both fans of the show, and even with such limited space, they decided to build separate setups. He's rocking dual 27-inch, 165Hz LG monitors and landscape mode, mounted on a secret lab sit-in stand desk. I always recommend going for standing desks when the budget allows it. That way you don't stay in one fixed position for longer periods of time especially when you're working from home. Johnny definitely has his priorities straight by investing in his comfort and health. The Herman Miller chair is proof of this for when he needs to rest his cheeks after long standing sessions. Just like Estefan, Johnny's also using a custom Echo ACR keyboard. He paired this with a G Pro X Superlight for gaming and an MX Master 3 for work. All of them resting on that majestic cyber in black TS mouse pad. You get brownie points for that. I too have a desk fan for my setup just like you. It's really a lifesaver during sweaty gaming sessions on those hot summer days. I mean, unless you're in Florida, there's no saving you. For audio, my guy is rocking the HyperX Cloud Alpha S for gaming and the Jabra Evolve 265s for work halls. He's paired them with the Elgato Wave 3 microphone, which he can tuck away whenever it's not in use. So this guy has two PCs powering this setup. First is his beefy custom build for gaming, featuring an i7 13700K, a Gigabyte RTX 4080, and 11 freaking fans providing more than enough cooling. And second, a Lenovo ThinkPad laptop stationed on a stand right behind his monitor, which he uses for work and the hub. That's how you keep the browsing history separated when you're living with someone. The cable management is so good, it is getting me weak on the knees. He rattled everything cleanly thanks to cable clips. We got raceways along the desk legs and a cable box. No complaints here. I'm actually excited to see the improvements when you're not limited to space. Thank you, Johnny, for coming on the show. 
Kevin is yet another returning contestant whose setup was first featured on episode 304. To give you guys a little reminder, Kevin is an electrician from Australia who built this setup for gaming and streaming. Now, even though the setup hasn't changed that much visually, his apartment has completely been remodeled. His fridge caused a fire in the middle of the night and burned the whole place down, which just sounds crazy to me. Luckily, his bank account was left without dents since the insurance covered all the costs and he was able to rebuild his setup in a span of five months. Right off the bat, what I missed during the last episode is the curved wall wrapping from the right side of the setup all the way behind him. I can't comment on how comfortable it can be, but I'd imagine it being a great asset for building a nice backdrop for your streams. Kevin is still rocking triple monitors in the same exact layout as before, a 32 inch Samsung as his main and a 24 and 27 inch Acer monitors as his secondaries. All mounted on the IKEA countertop that's resting on a few Alex drawers. This layout, although very unpopular, allows him to take full advantage of all the screen real estate while leaving just enough space on the right side of the desk for his PC. Moving on to peripherals, we have a Zayu Lang gaming keyboard and mouse combo, and for audio, he's still loyal to the Logitech Z200 speakers and the Astro A50 headphones. Just like before, the speakers are placed horizontally right underneath the monitors, sandwiching a stream deck and the Wave XLR audio interface. I love seeing that you also followed my recommendation and you mounted your webcam on your monitor instead of having it on the tripod, taking up unnecessary space on your desk. Good job. You could technically still clamp the DSLR onto a desk mount as well, by the way, uh, but those are just minor things. The devil is always in the details. Kale management is very much the same, all routed well with a few raceways underneath the desk to hide the cables and keep them off the ground. Even though most of his gear stayed the same, his PC went through a whole training arc transformation after the house fire. The new system was built in the NZXT H9 flow case, rocking a Ryzen 9 5950X paired with an MSI RTX 4080. I guess there was one good thing that came out of the fire, a nice PC upgrade. Another thing that's changed is most of the decor. Instead of personal pictures, he's added hexagonal acoustic panels on the walls with a FaZe Clan poster in the middle and a seemingly random Hogwarts Legacy poster on the top right. Judging by the FaZe controller and the poster in your backdrop, you must be either really good at shooters or a FaZe Clan fan. Either way, make sure to put some clips in our Top Gaming Clips channel on the Discord server. I'm curious about your skill level. I love seeing how even after a huge disaster, which would discourage really anybody, you remodeled the whole place and rebuilt your setup, giving it new life. So mad respect to you, Kevin, and thank you for coming back on the show. There is so much to talk about here, okay? Niklas is a 20 year old student from Germany who built this setup in one month to use it for gaming and productivity. Try to guess Niklas's favorite game. I'll give you guys three seconds. Obviously it's Sims 4. Jokes aside, anything that could be themed after the Doom series, Niklas did. It's not just the color scheme. We got custom work, wallpapers, and the posters on the wall. He's got the full Doom Eternal Collector's Edition collectibles. Say that three times in a row. Collector's Edition collectibles. Collector's Edition, coll okay, anyways. The book, steelbook, helmet, cassette, the Slayer replica, and even a red key card replica made of metal. The whole shebang. Oh, you thought I was done. Right above the collectibles, he's got a pegboard with all of his weapons and bulletproof vest. What? What? Look, I don't know what you're getting ready for, but if there's some sort of apocalypse where Hell Knights decide to invade, I think you're set. So it looks like he screwed in two white tabletops together to make this custom L-shaped desk, and it fits perfectly right in the corner of his room to accommodate all of his gear. 
The left side is dedicated to a setup with a triple monitor layout. We got the 27 inch Acer Predator on the top, a super ultra wide Neo G9 in the middle, and a 14 inch Lampron display at the bottom, which he uses a sensor panel. I love how you even went as far as theming the tiny display after Doom as well. Such great attention to detail. But just one minor nitpick for everyone watching and also whoever wants to be a part of Setup Wars in the future, please hide the icons on your wallpaper. Just do it temporarily, at least until you're done taking the pictures. Believe it or not, the icons do take away from the visual presentation. For peripherals, he's rocking a Razer keyboard, mouse, and mousepad combo, the cables of which are routed through a hole he drilled in the middle of the desk. Very nice. His main audio source are the two full Ultima 20s. He's got that mounted on the wall, which are connected directly to the two full receiver, chilling in its own custom cutout to the right side of the setup. Okay, real quickly, who comes up with the name two full? That sounds so hideous. But when it's time to get serious, he switches to the Corsair Virtuosos and has the Logitech G935 on standby as backup. The cable management is immaculate and truly a blessing for all of our eyeballs. Of course, the wooden panel covers all the cables, but this didn't stop Nicholas from going the extra mile and managing them with the cable clips and brackets. Close to no cables can be spotted behind the PC either, since he ran them through a white cable sleeve into a hole he drilled into the desk. Some of these cables connect to my favorite part of his setup, the custom power button with toggle switches that he built right into the desk as well. That is freaking epic. The rocket ship that these toggles turn on is powered by an i9-10980XE and the ASUS RTX 4090 in white. Damn! It's been a while. It's been a while. He stayed true to the Doom theme with the additional custom mods, like painting parts of the motherboard and the cable outlets in white, and the AIO and PCI slot covers in red. On one end, I do kind of like how you didn't waste space in the corner underneath the desk where you put the drawers in, but on the other hand, I'm getting Jay's Two Cents vibes because he too used a full IKEA drawer in the corner, which is very difficult to access. It's gonna be very uncomfortable to bend over and reach the bottom drawers, and you can't even access the top drawer. So I guess there's pros and cons to everything. Now, if we pan over to the right-hand side of the setup, we see that the custom work doesn't stop there. There are two more custom painted cabinets for extra storage, and the surface is used as an altar to display the Doom Eternal collectibles we talked about earlier. Nicholas didn't spare any effort for the rest of the room either. Right above his couch, he's proudly displayed his sneaker collection lit up with a few RGB strips. It's crazy to think how this is your first ever setup, given the custom work and the attention to detail that went into everything. I'm very proud and happy to hear that you were inspired by Setup Wars to join the PC Master Race and build your own personal space. I mean, there were some areas that could definitely use improvements, but you know, the amount of effort you put in the setup far outweighs the smaller details. And this is without a doubt worthy of taking home the 64th seal of approval. So hit me up on Discord to claim your plaque and your free TechSource mouse pad. Exceptional work, my guy. And that wraps up today's video. As always, let me know in the comment section which of these setups was your favorite. And before you guys go, let me know in the comment section if you enjoyed these more detailed, longer episodes of Setup Wars, or if we should switch back to the shorter versions. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I love you beautiful nose hairs, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.